everyone. Welcome to another episode of Analytics Insight Podcast. I'm your host, Pasi Dharmender, Sales Manager of Analytics Insight. Augmenting RPA with AI technology expanded the possibility of business process automation to include nearly any scenario. Cognitive boards are reason and make decision, learning on the job to become valuable resources in your human digital workforce. But the transformative potential of intelligent automation is that it creates the opportunity to reimagine how business operate by seamlessly integrating technologies, uh, work process and people. With that in mind, I would like to welcome today's guest, Raghuram Ramamurthy, founder and CEO of Rapid Acceleration Partner, who will share his perspective and viewpoints on AI and related technology and its impact on business growth. Hey, Raghu, thanks for joining. Thanks, uh, Amanda. Good morning to everyone. Uh, Raghu, most of the business leaders, you know, they start businesses when they have understood uh, why they should start organization and what problem it can solve in, in industry. So, uh, so kindly brief us, what inspired you to start with the Rapid Acceleration Partner? So I, uh, my co-founder and I, we come with a lot of business experience, right? We are not, while we have experience in largely technology space, we are not the hardcore techies, we are not the guys that start coding out, right? Uh, so essentially we were, uh, we took our time, we said, hey, there is all this talk about AI, uh, right, that's going around uh, in the market. Uh, we wanted to do something in the AI space, but we said, hey, let's take a look around and understand where is the gap in the market today? Like, what are uh, problems that people are grappling with? And we found that uh, there was a lot of talk about AI. Right? Everyone was talking about AI. Everyone wanted to do AI. But we found that not everyone was really being able to use its complete potential. Right? Uh, everyone wanted to explore what they can do. But most of them were stopping with just that exploration part. And we realized, uh, uh, and we kind of talked to some people, realized why that was. Right. There was a significant gap in terms of what is being offered, how people were able to consume it. Right, being uh, uh, I mean, it's it's been now about five six years that there is a lot of talk about practical AI and adoption is increasing, but there is still a huge portion of the market that still doesn't even understand uh, the space. Right, what they can do with AI. Uh, uh, all they know is they just consume AI on a day to day basis with with Facebook or Amazon. But that's just about it. So, so there was this big gap, uh, that, that chasm that we wanted to close, uh, which is why we started uh, on Rapid Action Partners. Yes, absolutely. Great. And great to know that, you know, you have understood the gap. And uh, I, I, I can say that, you know, previously it was like just a buzzword and uh, most of the bigger organization and enterprises, they were harnessing, you know, the artificial intelligence. But now... Um, other major players like a mid-size organization as well as a startup, they are also harnessing and they are also utilizing the artificial intelligence, not just uh, in one sector, but they are also uh, utilizing it in a different sector. And uh, it is also adding a great value to the organization. So moving ahead, so brief us about a Rapid Acceleration Partner. Uh, it focuses on artificial intelligence and the services it offers. So, so essentially, like I was saying, the, the gap that we saw was um, there was a lot of talk about AI being able to do right? Even today, I think the moment you talk AI, you talk about it in the context of Amazon or Facebook, you talk about it in the context of uh, driverless cars, right, and all of that stuff. Um, but there is this uh, piece around how do I actually use AI in the day to day life? Right? I go to office, I do some work, what is it that I do, right? So essentially, a lot of focus so, was uh, on with, when we talk to a lot of people, they all talk about, say, how do I actually use AI in my day to day life? Right. Is there something I go into work daily and I have a team, the team does some tasks. Can AI really help with being able to support with those tasks that help automate those pieces? Right. So that is kind of what, what we, uh, where we wanted to zero in, which is what we call as operational hyper automation. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not looking at these shooting the stars kind of stuff, but there are day-to-day -day tasks that you're grappling with with manual work. Right. And that is the piece that we do. 
Uh, so we essentially do the RPA piece, right, uh, as a technology that has existed for a while, but RPA with a significant amount of intelligence added to that, right, and and, uh, and not just intelligence uh, in, in the sense of being very um, narrow, uh, more capable, right? We essentially do a very, very wide variety of tasks that we can do in the automation space, right, centered around uh, RPA for uh, the hyper automation but essentially being able to help with all almost all types of tasks that you can do with either seeing, listening, right, that kind of stuff, which is either documents, could be emails, it could be um, like language processing stuff, right? It, we're doing something in the publishing industry, we're doing something in the automotive retail space with, with leads and making sense out of leads uh, and offering quotes for them. Uh, so it's a very, very wide variety of things that we do, but essentially uh, in the operational hyper automation space, being able to combine RPA with a significant amount of intelligence offered at a very, very flexible uh, model, right? That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good, you know, uh, services about a rapid acceleration partner and how it is focusing on the customer. As well as I, I like your uh, one point which you have mentioned, like, you know, you, before starting organization, you have... Uh, collected insight from uh, different stakeholders like you have asked about it to a customer and so i just want to know like you know so what about research you have done like it is just a primary research or you have also included the secondary research in order to come out uh, you know with the with the solution of rapid acceleration yes, partner so, yeah so I, I won't say it's not like a very structured mm-hmm. research process as such mm-hmm. right but the fact that we reach out to a lot of companies first of all try to understand their problems mm-hmm. right and then we looked at what are solutions that are existing in the market today to be able to solve those problems and why is it that people are not able to consume those solutions See, that's the thing right so if there are problems that people are talking about mm-hmm. and there are products available in the market to solve those problems right and why are they still sitting with those products Right? And these are customers that are telling us, hey, if you find a solution to my problem and come to me, I will actually be very happy to take that. Right? Uh, obviously, with these constraints. Right? So, uh, so some constraints that they talked about were things like, I don't want to commission a project that is like an R&D that will run for, for like years. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, second, I don't want to necessarily commission something where mm-hmm. uh, there's so much of upfront cost, I don't even know whether I will get the returns on something. Uh, yes. The third is, uh, hey, I, um, I, I don't want to be invested in something where will it make even commercial viable, can make it commercially viable for me, right, in the long term, right, uh, for, the, for the time and uh, money that I'm going to spend. Third is, uh, can it work in OPEX, right? So, so these were constraints that people are talking about from a business standpoint, right? And there are also some questions in terms of, hey, okay, I'm going to use some some service that is available in the market, right, or um, some automation solutions available in the market, but it's not able to automate a significant chunk for me, right? That is, I still have to live with a lot of automation because the system is not flexible, right? Uh, so so those were really the two pieces that we heard. Mm-hmm. And we said, how do we actually balance this, right? Okay, mm-hmm. we have to give a better product, give them the flexibility in hands of the users. At the same time, we offer, are able to offer it at, at an extremely affordable price and a model where uh, there is not much of R&D, there's certain sort of predictability in the solution, right? Uh, I mean, again, you, you cannot come up with a solution at the drop of a hat, but there needs to be a certain bit of predictability to how the solution will work, when they can see it working, things like that. So how do you balance these two? Um, that's kind of how we came up with our, with our whole platform. Yeah, absolutely. And in a nutshell, I can say that, you know, uh, you have... Uh, it's like a design thinking, like, you know, you have uh, considered the viability, uh, feasibility and durability. And based on that, that's how you have come out uh, with the solution. And uh, so moving ahead, like, uh, tell us how Rapid Acceleration Partner is contributing to artificial intelligence and RPA industry of the nation and how a company is bene- benefiting its customer. So, so uh, essentially what we are doing is uh, we are uh, biggest strength is how we have been able to package right um, mm-hmm. so if you at, at a at a very uh, ground level right uh, if you look at what uh, what problems we are trying to solve or uh, what solutions we are offering right they are not very different from what others are offering right but it, uh, it is not the what that we offer but it's the how we offer that is significantly different right? so uh, essentially our it's the packaging 
right uh, like i talked about it's the industry in general like if you look at the industry as a continuum of, uh, of uh, stuff right on one end of the continuum is you say hey my, my solution is extremely easy to use all you need to do is just send send a document you'll get data out right or um, you just come in uh, and just punch in your training parameters you'll get the data out right you don't have to worry about doing anything at all uh, everything is pre done uh, you just come it's a plug and play kind of a model right now that's an easy to use model like the one end right the other end is obviously you go with writing code right all the way and make it more complex but it's difficult to use but that is the other end where your code is where you offer extremely high flexibility mm-hmm. right and the more easier you try to make it um, you keep losing the flexibility right because the more flexibility that you offer in hands of the users the more they can do things wrong right the more you want to avoid them from doing things wrong you reduce the flexibility and trying to make make you want to make things easy right so it, uh, but somewhere not all solutions can be easily offered without flexibility right can be solved without that flexibility option so essentially our uh, differentiating factor was could you actually still make it little easy to use right make it a low code no kind of current kind of a platform Mm-hmm. but they don't have to program they don't have to worry about it you really don't need a data scientist to be able to build ai models but at the same time how do you make it slightly easier to use and offer significant amount of flexibility to be able to fine tune the solution to get to your efficiency parameters right and that is the part that we have been able to do successfully right and and keeping that because it's done on the platform we have taken a lot of the decision making away and things like that you are able to bring a certain level of predictability to the solution you are able to do a lot of things up front uh, right uh, uh, we keep the upfront cost low and make it an opex model right which is essentially making uh, ultimately the solution is able to automate right to make more uh, fulfilled uh, employees end of the day mm-hmm. and yet at the same time offer it at an extremely commercially viable price yeah absolutely and uh... so uh, see see this next question is it's very general question i wanted to ask like uh, what makes company okay any company innovate you and uh, you know what partnership or involvements or engagement uh, a company has to done to drive innovation so according to you uh, what's your thought on that i, I think innovation um, in my opinion innovation comes in multiple directions Mm-hmm. right so uh, when we say innovation we kind of uh, it's very easy to think that okay you're going to do something that is completely cutting edge that no one has ever done before right or um, we say hey i am going to um, really build in the ai space mm-hmm. right what you would think of innovative is if you build a completely wacky algorithm that will throw things out of the park right you came up with something completely different mm-hmm. and so on but if you look at uh, most companies that are very successful and in my opinion companies that are innovative are ones that are not necessarily only it mean that doesn't mean that companies that invent technology are not innovative obviously they are right but you can have plenty of examples of companies that don't necessarily have to invent technology mm-hmm. but you can still be innovative in how you package it right you can be innovative in how you carry it to the customer so you can be innovative in how you how you adopt the technology for a certain application right I, i think those are the key pieces that are there and i think the biggest way that you would make a company innovative is constantly push for people to be able to think on lines of hey we are going in certain particularly in the ai rp space right and if you have to be a little differentiated from your market you're going into slightly uncharted territory you're doing some things that your your nobody else has done you don't have a point of reference right sometimes you don't know whether you're going down the right path or not is this is this something that you need but you're going to say hey here is a problem that you have and it's being solved in a certain way which is not necessarily right so how do i actually come up with with a, a completely different way of solving that particular problem right and sometimes you could it could be very indigenous solutions that you come up with and so on so from a from partnership standpoint i think one uh, so we partner with a lot of which so ours is a technology platform right so we partner with a lot of uh, companies that have the domain expertise and so on that drive certain pieces of uh, um, solutions for us right so i mean they they bring the industry knowledge which we are able to need in and come up with some innovative solutions for those industries 
Um, the other uh, side is the spectrum is we work with a lot of academics, mm-hmm. like with a few colleges. And I think just just students being students, fresh, right? They they have not been molded. I think they have they have a certain level of inquisitiveness. Uh, I think just that being open minded and inquisitive um, tends to bring fresh ideas in, into our ecosystem. Yeah, that's that's the, you know that's absolutely a good point which you have mentioned. Uh, especially you know at the start you mentioned about uh, a company has to come out with the a convenient and adaptable uh, solution so that it can be adop- adopted by any of the customer and it should be very uh, reliable as well as seamless and uh, most convenient to use and second point which you have mentioned like you are partnering with uh, different stakeholder as well as you know you're hiring the student as as a fresh talent so that you know uh, uh, fresh innovative solutions as well as idea comes into the organization so that's absolutely a good point which you have mentioned now moving ahead uh, how are the disruptive technologies like you know right now as you know it's not a buzzword right now the whatever the technologies are there in the market so how are the disruptive technologies like ai big data intelligence automation impacting today's innovation and how has the role of the leader has changed over the years from as a leader i think one thing that is um, clear, right uh, uh, is to obviously lead the way for for the teams for the people the company right, continue to work on making things easier uh, and better for people in their company Uh, right uh, at the same time um, balancing priorities of all other stakeholders to be able to deliver um, ultimate returns right from the company right? i think that's that is a premise that hasn't changed mm-hmm. how that was done is something that has changed over the years right i think we have seen a significant revolution uh, in the manufacturing space over the years right we saw the, the whole industrial revolution saw that um unleashing of saying hey i'm going to deliver stakeholder value while i uh, the is really the industry revolution with machines and all that assured in a certain level of uh, fulfillment mm-hmm. for people because they did not have to do the more dangerous jobs they did, people did not have to do the handling right uh, it improved uh, their their general ergonomics uh, of how they work in the organization and so on right and with uh, with the physical robots coming in the manufacturing space again right we saw that whole thing is showing on so that there are very repetitive tasks which really the people don't have to stand there and do right rather we skill those operators they become operators for machines they look at whether the machine is doing its job right or not what should it be doing and so on so they focus on more of the the real human pieces and the real mechanical pieces can be left to to the machines right um, so today the disruptive technology space that's happening here is is kind of exactly the same that's happened right the whole internet era itself has ushered in a certain uh, change in business model right and the whole piece that we are today talking about including automation ai big data and rp and all that is really that what was done in the shop floor mm-hmm. many years ago is really happening in front of the computer right why do we need to have human sitting in front of the computer punching in data right yes. taking data from one system and pushing it to the other right working on working on populating data into spreadsheets and things like that right yes it is give them the freedom to say hey the machine will do the job for you right you need to your job is not to pull the data into the spreadsheet and create a report but your job is to look at that report and try and make more sense out of that report and then decide what direction you need to take as a business right uh, i i think there was this whole there is obviously the side of the story where you say these are going to wash in a huge job losses and all that yeah uh, absolutely all of go away what will you do right but if you look back yes. into history Right. it was only a very small temporary phenomenon that happened right and the the way the adoption the way the kind of the industry will tend to grow and drive the economic growth really today it's very difficult I me mean, you take india as a case it's not easy to find operators for manufacturing space right you, you have a in a large country like india you have the dearth of talent right in developed markets like the us you have a huge dearth of talent right you are not able to get people for the shop floor which is why you are even you end up even out, uh, outsourcing parts and stuff like that 
So essentially, the whole ecosystem is changing. And I think today, if you are a leader in, in an organization, you cannot ignore any of the disruptive technologies. It, it's, it's become a very fundamental part of your fabric. It is, um, it is about, it's not about whether to embrace it or not. The question is about how to embrace it. Yes, indeed. You know, indeed, I, I totally agree with your viewpoints. And uh, I would like to add that, you know, automation or leveraging artificial intelligence or other technology has opened a new possibilities and the pace of adoption has been rapid. Institutions of all sizes globally are leveraging automation to drive value. Uh, also, it is creating a performance productivity opportunities for businesses and the economics, even as they uh, reshape the employment and the future of work. So absolutely, you have, you know, um, you have explained very well. So moving ahead, kindly share your point of view on current scenario of artificial intelligence industry and its future. Yeah, I, I think in the AI space, uh, as everyone is talking about it, I think we've just barely scratched the surface in terms of the capabilities of AI, right? Obviously, the models and neural networks and the whole engine pieces, all that that you hear every day, right? the AI did this, AI did that, and uh, stuff like that. You keep hearing about it. Right, we are we keep hearing about the movement towards artificial general intelligence or AGI, which is a very capable form of AI that can do beyond what it's taught to do. Um, right, uh, uh, but I do believe that we are we are some time away from seeing those pieces. But uh, I, I think AI is whether people like it or not. Right, AI is here to stay. Right, um, AI is not taking over our lives. Right, it is about how we look at it. Yes. Say rather than looking at AI taking over our lives, I think the way we should look at this as AI making our lives better. I, mean, I think that's the way. If we embrace it that way, um, I think it's 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 going to be a smooth transition for everyone, and and uh, that's really where we want to be, right? We want to be able to embrace AI, get make our lives easier, so that we can actually live live a more um, luxurious life, just like we've done with every every other. Thing that is coming right like when mobile phones came uh, as much as mobile phones have their disadvantages it has tremendous advantages right yes, when yes. cars came it made a life easier when mobile phones came it made a life easier when computers and internet came it made our lives easier imagine imagine being stuck in something like this pandemic without internet there's no way this, this world would have crashed right but for but for the internet and ability to work remote and stuff like that right uh, something like a pandemic and the lockdown would have just crashed the world economy like crazy. The fact that we have, every country has been able to come out of it much, much faster and bounce back is only because of the full backbone for this recovery and the fact that it held the world together was, was the whole internet revenue. I think just like that, AI is just going to make life better and better. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, I would like to also give one instance on AI in healthcare. So now, nowadays, you know, AI is actually introduced in the medical field to keep the medical records in digital format and conduct uh, patient che checkup using uh, smart technology. It provides solutions, especially in the targeted treatments, unique, uh, uniquely composed drugs, personalized therapies. AI is an innovative technology that helps to guide uh, surgeon during the medication, treatment, and operation. The main implication of this technology is for better decision making for uh, complicated cases. It is also helping to track, detect, and investigate and control the infection in the hospital. Technology, you know, I must say the technology has developed and optimized online patients appointment platform and in future, it will be helpful in all medical area to serve hum humanity. So as the point which you have mentioned, it is, you know, it is actually AI. It, it's it's depend on the uh, a company, how they can utilize or harness the, the technology. So, and uh, you have uh, explained very well by giving an example of mobile. So, so that's that was a, a nice example. So so let's yeah. go ahead to the next question. So kindly uh, mention some of the major challenges uh, the company has faced, you know, till now during pandemic and how your proactive role and your contribution towards company and the industry. 
So, yeah. So I, I think uh, just like any other uh, company, one of the the good thing for us is like uh, we were not a very large company, and uh, even before the pandemic really uh, struck us, even the the early last year, like March, mm-hmm. right? We saw early signs and said, hey, maybe we should we should be proactive and uh, we should start working from home. So even mm-hmm. before the restrictions came with the lockdowns and the governments introduced all those, uh, we just said, decided one day and said uh, from tomorrow, everyone mm-hmm. had laptops and stuff like that. Everyone could easily work from home. We said mm-hmm. from tomorrow, we'll just start working from home. We'll only convene uh, if absolutely required. So I, I think just being that proactive and prepared Mm-hmm. Uh, I think helped us uh, uh, adjust to the the initial phases of those lockdowns and restrictions much easier mm-hmm. because uh, there are a lot of companies that didn't see it coming and when they saw it coming it was a little late for them right so because we we saw it coming somehow and we, we kind of proactively went down it was a slightly easier piece but just like uh, most of the companies uh, basically we had a couple of challenges one challenges on the customer end uh, mm-hmm. because customers who suddenly were faced with with problems of having to go into work from home uh, kind of scenarios and um, um, customers' priorities slightly more worrying around uh, how the pandemic is going to pan out and things like that. And uh, obviously with, with the whole suddenly moving into remote and all that, things load down on the project side and that kind of stuff. And uh, being a young company from our side, uh, we had uh, on the platform side that we were developing with a young team, I think we had our own share of struggles with uh, with working from home and, and so on. Uh, uh, but luckily uh, for us, the space that we are in uh, is a space that uh, is very heavily in demand. So we had a continuous stream of projects and even though they were slow, I think we, we, there were some that we had. And, and I think over time, we've also learned slowly on how to adapt into, into a remote uh, more of working uh, with teams uh, spread over and trying to get more structure in uh, in in the um, continuously look at saying hey how do you actually make things better than than the last release right you made one release today you want to make another release a month down the line mm-hmm. what did we learn from there that we can incorporate it here and make things better and so on so I, I think that's uh, essentially what we so so we have we've had the regular major challenges that we've had both on the customer front, right, as well as with the teams, just with the whole remote working. But um, I'd say, have we got there 100% yet? No. Uh, but have we learned and become much better? Uh, I'd say, yeah, far better from when it started. Yeah, every organization, you know, every organization have, um, they have struggled and uh, leaders of different organization, they have come out with the different solution. And uh, they were, you know, very pro- proactive in taking steps to to fight this pandemic, and they came out with a different solution, uh, so that it should not prevent uh, the the working of the organization. So, well, that was the last question, and you know, I got to learn a lot about uh, Rapid Acceleration Partner, its services, and how it is making a difference in the industry. And I'm certain listener must have learned something valuable today. And in case they are interested to learn more, then they can uh, certainly visit uh, rapidautomation.ai. Uh, that's a website. So, Raghu, you know, thank you so much for your time for this podcast. And we are looking forward to talking with you in future. Have a great day. Thank, thanks a lot. It was a pleasure talking to you. I hope uh, um, the listeners carried something uh, today in, in the space that we are operating. And like I said, yeah, they can they can feel free to get in touch with me, or connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, and um, shoot any questions that they have, and I'll be very happy to answer. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Thank you.